morning and welcome to this morning's online worship session. Today is our final one of the series where we're looking at the names of God and today Jackie is taking us through the name which we find in Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. And I'm sure it's going to be a great service so I can't wait to hear what she has to say about the subject. So before we start, let's begin with a tiny bit of liturgy and a prayer which I found on the Ministry Matters website. If you'd like to join in, then join in with the lines that Jared says and I'll also put them in bold on the screen. Come walk in green pastures. Follow the shepherd. Come lie down in green pastures. We trust the shepherd. Come dine at the table of abundance. We are fed by the shepherd. Come dwell in God's house. We live in the shepherd's care. Loving shepherd, you know our names. You care for us. When we face darkness and death, walk beside us. When we hunger for your love, fill us with your presence. When we are fearful, feed us at your table. May we dwell in a house of goodness and mercy all the days of our lives. Amen.
left to me There's no shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up Coming after me There's no wall you won't kick down Lie you won't tear down Coming after me There's no shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up Coming after me Jehovah is my shepherd. I will lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside waters of rest. He restores my soul. He guides me on the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I do not fear evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of my adversaries. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of Jehovah for the length of my days. This is the word of the Lord. Are you sitting comfortably? Then I'll begin. This is the last in the series looking at some of the Old Testament Hebrew names for God. I've been allocated Jehovah Rohi, meaning the Lord is my shepherd. So it's only logical that our reading for today was Psalm 23. I'm guessing that most of you recognise it. It's the most famous and well-known psalm, and some of you have learnt it off by heart at Sunday school probably in the King James Version. The modern versions aren't vastly different, so I'll be quoting from them. The psalm is six verses long, but I'll focus on verses one to four, because the last two verses describe God as a host, inviting us to a meal. But today, God is a shepherd. Let's start with the first five words. The Lord is my shepherd. 
This is a translation of the name Jehovah Rohi. The Hebrew word for Lord is Jehovah, the God of the Old Testament, who always has been and always will be. And the word Rohi means my shepherd, the one who tends the sheep. These five words, the Lord is my shepherd, is a simple, short expression of a very deep trust and faith in God. So who wrote these words? It was David, Israel's king. But don't forget that as a teenager, David spent years looking after his father Jesse's flock of sheep. He knew all about the work of a shepherd and about the characteristics of sheep. The Lord is my shepherd is a very personal statement. My shepherd, not necessarily yours or even ours, but mine. David speaks of an intimate relationship between the Lord as shepherd and he, David, one of the sheep. The Lord is my shepherd. Shepherd. I wonder what you see if you try to imagine a shepherd. Perhaps it's a modern day man or woman whizzing about the hills on a quad bike. Maybe it's the competition, one man and his dog, that many of us have watched on TV. Maybe it's a biblical illustration of the shepherd dressed in flowing white robes, carrying an equally clean, white, fluffy lamb. Let's hear how David himself described his work as a shepherd. Your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, struck it and killed it. Phew, it was a dirty, difficult, tiring and sometimes dangerous job. Sheep needed a shepherd all the time to lead them to fresh pasture, to steer them in the right direction, to count them into the fold to protect them from thieves and wild animals and to rescue them when they were in trouble. No wonder God, sorry, no wonder David described God as his shepherd. God had protected his life on the hills as a shepherd boy, then again in his fight against Goliath and finally for many years when his life was in danger from Saul and his soldiers. God had always cared for David as a shepherd cares for his sheep. But the sentence doesn't finish there. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. Or I have everything I need. It reminds me of one of God's other names, El Shaddai, All Sufficient One. Katie reminded us a few weeks ago that God is enough. We don't need anything or anyone else. I came a bit stuck on this thought that I have everything I need. Let me explain. If I look back over my life, despite the ups and downs, God has provided everything I need and much, much more. As some of you know, I was born in a children's home and spent eight months there. I needed parents. God provided a couple who were prepared to adopt twins and we were given a Christian upbringing. Not all children are so fortunate. Now in this country, there are hundreds of children in care, hoping for foster parents. Will God supply their need? 
And while I might sometimes shout, I'm starving, I've never been really, really hungry, let alone starving. I paused in this talk and took a long, hard look at the abundance God has given me. It wasn't just money, but time, energy, talents, my home and especially my garden. I had to take action and make some changes. I still find this verse very challenging. How can Christians in poverty or suffering persecution say, the Lord is my shepherd, I have everything I need. Can I suggest that you spend a little time pondering this verse and see what God says to you? At last, we're on to verse two. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. What a wonderful picture of rest, a tummy full of good food and a safe place to drink. Swift running water is dangerous for sheep. They need still water and the shepherd knows the best place to find it. I wonder how often God has to make us lie down. Our lives can be busy and even frantic. Do we allow ourselves time to rest and to drink in God's presence on a daily basis? Or are we always anxious to see what's over the horizon and to achieve everything on our to-do list? Verse three continues. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Life can be draining, but if we allow God to lead, he will bring us to places of refreshment, revival, rejuvenation and renewal of strength. We mustn't forget to take time off. And God guides me along a unique path. I mustn't compare my path to others. But under, underneath all our paths are God's laws of truth and integrity. Obedience to his leading is key. Finally, in verse 4, we have this wonderful promise. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and staff, they comfort me. Life is a journey and sometimes we walk through terribly dark times. Today, everything in the world feels so uncertain. And being a Christian is rarely a wonderful mountaintop experience. Valleys are inevitable, but we must just keep walking, facing our fears, knowing that God is with us and will bring us through the deepest valley. Because of Jesus' death and resurrection, we have the promise of eternal life. We need not fear death itself. I did wonder how the shepherd's rod and staff could possibly be a comfort to the sheep. But this rod was a type of club, not for disciplining the sheep, but for defending the flock from wild animals. A bit like this wooden rolling pin that I'm waving around rather dangerously. And the staff or shepherd's crook was a bit like this church warden's staff or wand. Very useful for keeping us two metres apart when we go back into the church building. It's a symbol of authority, which obviously the shepherd had over his sheep. He can lean on it, but its main purpose is to guide the flock, to steer them, and help count them. Rather 
than being an instrument of discipline and punishment, the rod and staff represent safety and guidance in place of our fears. So in these few verses, David relishes in the idea of the Lord as his shepherd. But does that mean that David is just a silly sheep? Are sheep really stupid and prone to getting lost? I needed to know. So I messaged Selena and Chris who live on a farm and who until recently kept sheep. I asked them, are sheep really dumb, defenceless, unteachable, stupid and prone to wandering off? This was Selena's immediate response. Sheep are not stupid at all, but intelligent in a different way to us. Wow, what an extraordinary statement. Do you remember in Genesis chapter 1 it says, God saw all that he had made and it was very good. Scientists are still discovering the extraordinary intelligence of animals. But Selena's comment challenged me at a very deep level. I can so easily label people as silly because they don't think or act in the same way as I do. None of these people are silly. They may in fact have a different kind of intelligence. They are all special to God. They are all part of God's flock. Selena then described many of the attributes of sheep, but she also told me that they sometimes give up on life. They can lose the will to persevere. Wow, another important lesson from Selena. The Lord our shepherd doesn't give up on us. We in turn must not give up on ourselves. Chris also had some wonderful insights, but this one really spoke to me. Sheep don't generally get lost, but they get stuck, entangled or trapped somehow and then separated from the flock when the others move away. How important it is that we keep attentive to God and keep in contact with other Christians. If we allow sin to take hold, we can become trapped and entangled and our lives are in danger. Thank goodness we have a God who is prepared to leave the 99 and go after the one sheep who is lost. Thank you, Selena and Chris. I've learnt so much. I can't finish this talk without pointing towards Jesus as the Good Shepherd. He is also called the Great Shepherd and the Chief Shepherd, the one who came to seek and to save the lost. Jesus says of himself, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And again, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. The Lord Jesus is my shepherd. I hope he's yours too. The Lord Jesus laid down his life for me and you. Unlike a human shepherd, he never slumbers nor sleeps. He keeps watch over us day and night. He has defeated death, so we can say with confidence, surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever.
morning. Let us pray. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. We give you thanks and praise for your written word in your Bible, Lord, where we can receive your love and encouragement on how to live our lives in your peace. We think of all the turmoil and sadness that is in this world today, with the pandemic touching millions of lives in one way or another through fear and death of loved ones. We ask for an overwhelming outpouring of your Holy Spirit to reach everyone today with your healing in whichever way it is needed. In your precious name we ask it. In your mercy, Lord. Amen. Father, we ask for your wisdom for world leaders to do what is right for their people, where there is famine, bring food and drink, where there is hatred, bring your love. Change code hearts in all our nations to warm, caring hearts that will make a difference to many people. In your mercy, Lord. Hear our prayer. Father, we think today of all the children and teachers going back to school this September. We pray for all of their protection from the coronavirus and that it will be a very happy and safe time for them all. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forever. Amen.
of the shadow of death. Your perfect love is casting out fear. Even when I'm caught in the middle of the storms of this life, I won't turn back. I know. So that's it this week. I hope that this week is one which is marked by you being able to recognise God's presence. Whether that is through his loving, gentle embrace as a shepherd, or whether that's through his protective and caring nature, or maybe that's even in your fear and your anxiety, knowing that God is Lord. Thank goodness that we have a God who is so awesome and so powerful and with us every step of the way. Until we meet again, whether that be online or in person, take care and stay safe.